Hey everybody, Brian Von Vier here. Today we're talking about those little itty bitty moments that you have during your campaign where you're going, ha ha, I'm in danger. And uh, of course, did you survive? Nearly every fight my Kenku Bardlock got into during our Curse of Strahd campaign. He survived against vampire spawn, hags, blights, and druids, all with single digits. Then his luck ran out when we were ambushed by Strahd himself. Yeah, when the big man comes out, you're gonna die. We needed a dragon shard for a torch to burn through webbing, even though our weapons couldn't rip through. There was one in a long hallway on a pillar. We knew what was going to happen, or so we thought, so we sent the rogue, me, alone to retrieve it. I took the shard off and placed it back quickly to see if it triggered any traps. Well, not only did it still set off the trap, it closed the door to the entrance of that long hallway and I was completely separated from the party. Q, two poisonous spiders that were already a handful when we fought them together, each of them can attack three times, the last one able to deal a powerful poisonous attack that is stronger if you fail your con saves. And they had a lot of health to boot. <laughs> I'm in danger! Luckily, I was able to stall two rounds by dodging and using shield. I multiclassed into sorcerer, then bolted when my team opened the door. Unluckily, not only did I receive a bit of damage from the third attack of one of the spiders both rounds, I managed to uncanny dodge one of them and pass the first one's con save. I also took damage from another player rolling a nat 1 to attack with a gun. I did manage to escape with the shard, but what a scale! Trying to rescue a young bronze dragon from kobolds who were trying to use its breath attack to fuel their scorpion mech tank. That's innovative. Druid got the dragon easy in wild shape and started fumbling with locks. My warlock and our rogue start sneaking around the piles of crap laying around, but get seen when Paladin goes loud. I take five sling hits in one turn, three of them are critical hits, which at level three at the time took me down to about a quarter of my HP. I chugged a potion and booked it for the dragon. Druid healed me up a bit more and we freed a pissed off teenage dragon. We survived and gained a dragon friend. The kobolds, oh, lunchtime for the dragon. My little catfolk guy was kidnapped a total of three times before we even hit level five in one of my campaigns. One of them was because I strapped up and was about to be sacrificed for a demonic soul. <laughs> Another because I had been doing shady deals in the alleyway for cheap goods. And another was when I was roped up in the cellar room of a popular bar restaurant. I was in a modern campaign and honestly some people pay for that. Level two, surrounded by imps while the party fought off the other seven. And no, I died a gruesome session four death. And then on session six, I was brought back to life as a reborn. And my home was the order of the ghost slayer and my family, I'm not happy about it. So this takes time to set up. Everybody sit down and be patient. It's a multiverse theme campaign with the general premise being our characters were plucked from their respective realities to fix an issue in a different reality. My group accidentally did an act of terror, attacking a police station and killing numerous guards with several eyewitnesses. You know, typical Monday. I cannot stress this enough though. We were 100% guilty. <laughs> Jesus. Oh God. However, later on in this campaign, we decided we didn't want to be terrorists anymore. Hey Steve. Yeah, Bob. I don't want to be a terrorist anymore. Okay. We should clear our name, so we decided everything we did was all an illusion. Denial, denial, denial. It's a bit more complicated than that, but we basically made up this magical criminal who messed with our minds and used illusions to fake the deaths of people. We had uh, evidence, wink wink, already, so we thought it wasn't too much of a stretch. We even had the captain of the police, who we murdered in the middle of a crowd, brought back to life and recruited to our side. I honestly think we just burned him out so much he didn't care anymore, he just wanted to go back to his normal life. So we go to the police station, everyone except our shapeshifter, disguised as the police captain whose name was Heathcliff. We all got sent to jail cells, except our shapeshifter who started talking with the police captain and rolled relatively low on their deception checks. 
it looked like it was all over. The new captain was too suspicious. Then our shapeshifter said, okay, I was lying. I'm actually Heathcliff from another dimension. Uh, this was half true? We were all from different dimensions. Our DM had our shapeshifter roll a fate roll, a homebrew rule, which is just a contested d20 roll to see if fate is on our side. Our DM rolled first, rolling a 19. We all thought it was over until our shapeshifter rolled a 20, baby, hot damn. After a bit more discussion, we got our names cleared. It didn't matter much for my character anyway, they died that same session, which kind of detracts from this story, but it's still a good story nonetheless. We were fighting a dragon. One of our characters was using a rifle. The dragon paralyzed the rifle using ranger and upcast and large until the rifle was colossal sized and used it like a varmint rifle to plink the rest of the party. Spoilers for Tyranny of Dragons, Horde of the Dragon Queen. DM here. Does that count? My players were investigating the cultist camp in chapter two and got caught, disarmed, and tied up in a tent until camp leaders could interrogate them that night, which is a story for another time. They managed to slip their bonds and escape the camp without being noticed, and they even rescued the monk they'd been sent to find. However, their stuff and several other prisoners they wanted to free were still in a cave in the back of the camp. So the bard and barbarian sneak back into the camp to at least grab their supplies back, and everything goes according to plan. Until on their way back out of the cave, who should spot them but Fulram Mondath, the second in command of the camp. I'll take the blame for this part, I misread the map and thought her chambers were in view of the tunnel they were using. One hold person on the barbarian later, things aren't looking great, but then the bard gets an idea. With a stellar deception check, he convinces Mondath that Resmir, a black half-dragon and official leader of the camp, is planning to double-cross Mondath and take the treasure for herself. Well, Mondath rallies her personal guard and, with the two party members, goes out to confront Resmir. When the other two party members see what's going on, they also return to the camp to help. At this point, things have gone way off script by now, but I'm thinking I can work with this. Mondath is a minor boss in the next chapter, but Resmir is a boss battle in chapter 8 and the big bad evil guy of the first book. Letting her wipe the floor with Mondath will give the party a good look at what they're up against and show an important artifact that Resmir holds, all while giving the party enough time to run and fight another day. Well, Resmir and Mondath square up in the camp in front of the party and all the cultists and the battle starts. As predicted, the battle is a complete curb stomp. After all, Resmir's combat rating is seven, and as I told the party when I noticed, has legendary actions, while Mondath's just CR2. In only two rounds, Resmir cuts Mondath in two. There's a moment of silence as everyone takes in what just happened. Then the barbarian runs into melee. Oh, shit. What follows is a bloodbath. The barbarian goes down almost immediately. The wizard and paladin turn back to help him. Resmir and a second half dragon that was in the camp start using their breath weapons and the wizard goes down. The paladin, oh, the paladin, bless his heart, keeps reviving the barbarian and tries to carry the wizard to safety, but the barbarian keeps going down since every time he disengages, Resmir just catches up to him on her next turn. Another breath weapon hits the paladin, who's carrying the wizard, making the wizard auto-fail her final death save and downing the paladin. The barb eventually can't go any longer and dies as well. Three failed death saves later, the paladin finally succumbs to his wounds. Only the sorcerer managed to escape fleeing with their monk friend into the night. In the end, the party did get resurrected. They've made a deal with a shadowy entity to return to life in exchange for an unspecified favor in the future. And I told them that this was one gimme for the campaign, which is still ongoing. We're about to play another session right now. My dragonborn, Zena, bard barbarian, touched a pink frog which was from the magic beans which summoned Arkan the Cruel, aka the champion of Tiamat. He critted her for a whopping total of 128 damage. Thankfully, she was not immediately killed, but it did bring her down to unconsciousness. 
Since the enemies are doing strategic plays, Zena failed her first death saving throw since Arkan struck her again, and then he left. With good rolls and the lucky feet, Zena is back on her feet and her wounds were cleaned from the wine fountain from a magic bean. Zena now has a scar across her stomach, and she has also unlocked a new fear of Arkan the Cruel. I had to fight Scarbrand's arm one time in a 40k game. Scarbrand was trying to enter Forge World Noxus through a warp rift. I ended up ramming his arm with a Torox primed filled with explosives to force it back through the rift and close it. Suffice to say, if Scarbrand had gotten through the portal, it would have been super bad. A player of mine, Tiefling Warlock, loves casting Armor of Agathus, and then running into melee and straight out again, so he gets hit by an Attack of Opportunity, then casts Hellish Rebuke. When fighting a mummy, he did the same and almost lost all of his HP and was really scared when I said he needed to make a con save. He was level 4 or 5 at the time. The campaign I am in takes place in a world where demons took control of most of the world. Our party reached a town that seemed untouched from all the chaos. Turns out that the whole town were vampires or vampire spawn. They were surprisingly friendly though and explained how the only way the demons know where to attack is because they can sense large gatherings of living creatures. The founders of the town were a dragonborn vampire couple and came up with the idea to convert everyone to vampire spawn to avoid being attacked, since vampires and vampire spawn are undead. The vampire spawn also had a surprising amount of free will, as the vampires only converted them to keep them safe. Cue the rogue, who decides it's a great idea to steal from our surprisingly friendly hosts. The rogue gets caught stealing an enchanted spear, and the male vampire goes ballistic. Bear in mind this wasn't a small town either, so imagine the party's anger at the rogue and terror as the entire town of vampires and vampire spawn turns on us. Luckily, we were able to talk our way out of it after the rogue gave up the spear. It's been three real life weeks since, and the party still isn't over it. I would've just given them the rogue and said, here, force him to make a new character for being a literal dipwit. Hey everybody, Brian Von VA checking in after the video. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, ring that bell, and let us know what kind of times were you in Denger and did you survive it? I love you all. Please be safe out there, be happy, stay bundled up, stay healthy and hydrated. And we'll see you next time. You all matter. We love you. Toodaloo.